Welcome third graders, we're going to be talking about Native Americans today. Our first lesson is called Spreading Through the Continents. Here you can see a picture of the continent we live on today, North America. And we're going to be talking about the first people or the Native Americans who lived here. The first question we ask ourselves is, well, how did they get here? People think that they came from Asia, and they actually think that they were able to walk here from Asia. Now, if you tried to walk here from Asia today, you wouldn't be able to because there is just a land bridge. There's no land. There's just ocean in between Asia and North America. Back then, however, it was really, really cold. So cold that it was what we call an ice age. That uh, places in the earth, water started to freeze up. And so the waters between Asia and America, uh, historians believe that they froze during that time so that people were able to walk right across. And these are the people we're going to be talking more about today. As we learn about Native Americans, here are some really important vocabulary words that you are going to need to know. The first word is the word nomadic, and the word nomadic is an adjective, so it describes a noun, and in this case it's going to be describing people. And nomadic describes people who move from one place to another for various reasons. Oftentimes they're in search of food, but there are people who don't really have a permanent house. They live their life always moving from one place to another. Again, nomadic means relating to people who move from one place to another, often in search of food. Your next word is prey. Prey is a noun, and prey is an animal that's hunted for food. So many of the Native Americans would hunt animals for food. Prey is an animal that's hunted for food, and I'm going to draw a bear to help me remember that. The word regions is also a noun, and it refers to large spaces or geographic areas. Geographic just means on a map, so it means large spaces or areas on a map. I'm going to maybe draw the state of California, because that's a region, and then the state of Oregon, the state of Washington. That'll help me remember that regions are large spaces of land or geographic areas. Your last word is woolly mammoths. Woolly mammoths were large mammals that are now extinct and they used to roam parts of North America and Asia and were hunted by the prehistoric people who migrated from Asia to North America. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of a woolly mammoth. Here you go, there's the picture of what a woolly mammoth was thought to have looked like. On your note paper, go ahead and write down a definition for each of these vocabulary words. If you're just taking your notes on a piece of paper, go ahead and just copy each word and write down what it means. As we go through our read aloud today, you're gonna hear the answers to the following questions. So go ahead and pause the video, read the questions now, so that you're gonna know what important information to listen for during the read aloud. I want you to imagine a long, long time ago, so long ago that we cannot say for certain when. In this ancient time, people began to move from one land to another. These prehistoric people were nomadic hunters who traveled in groups. These prehistoric people began to move from the land we call Asia into the land that we call North America. They didn't plan to move from one land to another. They were simply following the herds of animals that they hunted for their own survival. It is thought that various groups of people ventured on foot across a vast cold area between Asia and North America called Beringia, following herds of prehistoric animals. Historians think that the very beginning of this migration of ancient Asian people began during the last major ice age. It was during this ice age that large areas of the Earth's waters were frozen. At this time, northern regions of North America were covered in thick sheets of ice and giant glistening glaciers. As you heard earlier, because water had turned to ice during the Ice Age, sea levels had dropped and certain areas of land had become uncovered. Many scientists think Beringia was one of these areas. As these prehistoric people moved across Beringia, they lived and hunted in this icy world. There they followed and hunted great herds of large mammals such as woolly mammoths, mastodons, giant bison or buffalo, saber-toothed cats, and giant ground sloths. These large mammals are known as big game. All of these animals were prey for the people who migrated or moved from Asia to North America. 
The Beringia migration is a widely held theory among historians, but this is almost certainly not the only way that people arrived in North America. It's also likely that the people came to North America in boats, following the coastline in search of land and food, and then stayed because they discovered an abundance of new resources. This migration of people and animals didn't happen all at once, nor did these people come from just one place. People moved across Asia and into North America over a period of time. However they arrived, these are believed to be the very first people to inhabit North America. Eventually, as the climate began to warm and the ice-covered land began to thaw, it soon became possible to travel even farther into North America. Giant glaciers that had blocked native people's paths melted. People moved south through an area that opened up between two enormous glaciers. Scientists call this path between these glaciers the Ice-Free Corridor. This corridor or passage was cold and wet, but habitable. And so, large numbers of native people continued to migrate or move in small groups just as before. They lived a nomadic life as they followed the herds of animals that they preyed upon. In order to survive in this way, these native peoples had to be expert hunters. Although we don't know much about this period of human history, archaeologists have discovered a variety of spears, including leaf-shaped spears, embedded in mammoth's bones in addition to tools for scraping and carving bone. We can only imagine what life must have been like for these early peoples as they endeavored to survive in an ice-cold world by hunting creatures such as the nine-foot-tall woolly mammoth. With nothing more than a spear and stealth, they would have hunted in groups to take down their prey. A woolly mammoth would have provided many pounds of meat, as well as fur, tusks, and bones. A band of hunters and their families would most likely have stayed with the carcass or dead body of the animal until the food supply ran out. In addition to food, the animals they hunted also provided these native people with clothes. As the Earth's climate changed and it became warmer, the way these early peoples lived changed too. Gradually, many prehistoric animals that had been hunted for their meat, fur, and bones disappeared from our world forever. Were they hunted to extinction by people struggling to survive in a changing world? Or did climate change alter the delicate balance of the food chain to such an extent that these mammoths could no longer find the foods they needed to live? We'll never know for certain the answer to these questions. We do know that the saber-toothed tiger and the woolly mammoth no longer wander this land whereas other ancient creatures, such as the buffalo, did survive. It does appear that some animals were more able to adapt to climate change than others. The buffalo, for example, is thought to have become smaller and swifter over time. Once the ice was gone, new plants, grasses, and trees emerged, and various animals adapted to a new diet. Native peoples adapted, too. And so eventually, over many years, people moved right across this vast expanse of land to regions, various regions, to the wide open grasslands of the Central Plains. You can see those right here. Uh, to the northeastern and southeastern woodlands, here and here. And to the sun-drenched west coast and dry southwestern deserts. Some people settled in the far north regions of the Arctic and the subarctic. Some people moved even farther south into what we now call the continent of South America. Eventually, many ancient peoples chose to no longer live nomadic lives, but instead chose to settle in one place and establish permanent or semi-permanent settlements. They may have decided this because they discovered regions where the food supplies were plentiful in the form of animals to hunt and fish and plants to eat. One thing is certain that many native people began to farm even though they had previously survived by foraging for wild plants in addition to hunting prey. Native people began experimenting with planting and harvesting, and they eventually began to grow a variety of crops. Because of this, some people chose to stay in one place, and by their collective efforts, increase their own food supply. Over time, approximately 500 North American native tribes came to inhabit a wide variety of regions across North America. These native peoples, whose total population peaked or reached its highest number at about 20 million, would live their lives according to their own customs and cultures for thousands of years until European culture brought extreme changes to their way of life. Now that you've finished listening to the read aloud for today, it's time to answer our questions to make sure that we understood what we read today. Our first question is, how did the people of Asia get to North America? 
The next question is, why did they migrate to North America? What does nomadic mean? What animals did the first Native Americans hunt? And would you like to be nomadic or settle in a community? Which one sounds better to you and why? Go ahead and answer your questions. Now you can do these on a piece of paper. Um, and when you answer your questions, you don't have to copy the question down, but you do have to answer the question in a way that restates the question. And your answer should start with a capital letter and it should begin with a period. Now, if you're doing these questions on the computer, you can upload them to this assignment. If you're doing them on a piece of paper, you can send me a picture, or you can just show public and private virtue and say, Mrs. Sexton or Mrs. Chagru or Mrs. Mitchell or Mrs. Muscari, I did my work and I'm marking it as done because I'm public and private virtue, I did it, and I want you to know that I did it. So, how you submit your assignment today is up to you. Thank you so much, and we are excited to learn more about Native Americans with you. Tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and read the first chapter in our Native Americans Reader, but for today, we just started with the read aloud. Have a great day! Remember, scholars, that we miss you, and we hope you're having fun at home. Please email us or reach out to us with any questions you have, or just if you want to let us know how it's going. We love hearing from you. It is the best part of our days. Bye for now.